My name is Robert McMillan and I've been doing how-to videos for you guys for the last 10 plus years. I made over 3,500 videos and gotten a lot of views and I really appreciate you guys watching uh, all my how-to videos. But I want to do something different and that's because in the last few years I've made some big changes in my life. Uh, you see all these notebooks here. I got almost two decades worth of notebooks and all these notebooks represent stories and these stories are from my business so i started a company uh, back in 2001 called alltech one and alltech one basically uh, was an it consulting company that uh, i started just after uh, 9 11. so after 9 11 um, i was hired to restore all the enron emails which i'm going to tell all about another story uh, but uh, not in this particular video and after that, uh, my phone just rang off the hook uh, and uh, started this company, ended up with a lot of employees, and it lasted a really long time. So I had a lot of great stories that happened uh, over this time. About three years ago, the business was sold to a company that was expanding. And I felt at that time, and my partners as well, uh, we decided that it was a good time to sell the business. And so we did, and we all went off and did our own thing. And I went to make videos. So I've been making LinkedIn videos, lynda.com, Pluralsight, uh, the InfoSec Institute, and, and a bunch of others. Been making lots of great video courses, as well as keeping up on the YouTube channel. And now what I want to do is I want to tell you the stories that happened while uh, we had these two decades of business. We did a lot of, of great work. We also had a lot of crazy things happen. And so I just want to tell you about uh, some of those stories. And as you start and start fulfilling your career in IT, you're going to see a lot of parallels to some of the stories that I'll tell. One of the things that happened was is I got a call out of the blue from a TV station. It was a local Channel 6 station, the CBS station. Uh, I can't show it because of copyright issues, of course. And they said, hey, you know, we're having trouble with our email. Would you come by and fix our email for us? And at the time, of course, there was no uh, exchange online, Office 365. So they said, hey, would you uh, make it so we can upgrade to the latest version, uh, which I believe at that time was 2007. And could you also make it so it works because uh, they're getting inundated with spam and just things aren't going well. So I said, sure, I, I could go do that. So I went down there with one of my staff and we fixed them all up, got them upgraded and everything was working great. And I said, wow, this is great. We want you to do a, a lot more uh, of these types of jobs. We've got just tons and tons of work and we just are just not sure how to do it. You know, the, the engineering team was working as the IT team and they just didn't have a lot of experience with uh, Windows servers and, and Active Directory. So I said I would be happy to, and they said uh, our biggest problem is that we are we were just purchased, we were bought out by uh, another TV station, and the TV station that had us before left our Active Directory in an orphan state. So what does that mean? Well, it means that they were set up as a child domain to a parent domain. That parent domain shut them off and cut them out and the child domain no longer had a parent. So they no longer had the ability to make any changes uh, because the child domain was in read-only mode. So it was difficult for them to uh, do anything other than just create users and change passwords. They couldn't do group policies and, and a lot of other things. So we had to go in there and, and uh, create a whole new Active Directory for them and, and move them over in sections at a time. But that's not the point of this story. The point of this story is, is much different. The point of the story is uh, that uh, this was about the time of the first Obama election. And uh, so this goes back to 2008. And they said, hey, would you be interested in doing a story for us on uh, email hacking? because uh, email hacking was uh, you know, quite a big story back then, and they wanted to have someone they could interview and ask about those questions. So I said, sure, let's, let's do that. And I just assumed that we'd be sitting down at a desk and someone would come over either to my office or I would go over to their studio and we would record something. They said, oh, no, no, no. They said, we want you right at the news desk. We want to sit you down at the news desk and have a live interview. 
And again, this is not the same news desk because there's copyright, you know, pictures and things like that. But it gives you an idea of the kind of thing. One night I'm sitting down watching the news. The next night I'm literally at the news desk freaking out, wondering when they ask me the question, was I going to be able to answer the question or was I just going to throw up on live TV? I, did, I had no idea. So about an hour beforehand, I went up to uh, Mike Donahue and Kelly Day. They were the, the uh, people at the news desk at the time. And I said, um, hey, can we record this? Because this is nerve wracking. You know, I, I don't really want to do this live. And they said, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It'll, it'll go just fine. And so 15 minutes later, I come back to them like, you sure I can't just record this? And then, you know, no, no, you'll be fine. Everything's going to be great. So, okay, so I'm wearing my suit, I'm wearing my tie, I'm sitting down at the, the desk, and, you know, Mike's sitting next to me, and Kelly's sitting next to him, and here I am sitting live in the news desk. Now, one of the weird things about uh, news uh, nowadays, even back in 2008, is nobody sits behind the cameras. The cameras are all operated remote control. So I'm sitting in a studio, and uh, I'm hearing nothing. Uh, it's just the three of us sitting quietly waiting for the news to begin and for them to read off the teleprompter. Um, so there's somebody in the other room that's operating these robots uh, that are the cameras, and they move around and, and they go where they want to go. So they, they told me, they said, now don't freak out, but every once in a while, the robot cameras will uh, have a life of their own. They will just take off and zoom right up to the desk and crash into it. <laughs> I, I said, that doesn't sound like a very good design. But they said, it doesn't happen often, so I just wanted to warn you in case it happens. Fortunately, that didn't happen that night. But I was sitting there nervous, you know, pasty white. You know, I wasn't sure, you know, what was going to happen. And uh, the news comes on. And uh, Mike and Kelly, they start reading off the tele teleprompter, and everything's good. And I'm sitting just, you know, a, a foot and a half away from Mike, and Mike ends up saying, and, and now we'd like to go to Robert McMillan and talk about uh, email hacking during this election period time. And he turns to me, and just as he turns to me, he spits on me. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> and that broke the tension. Actually, I was suddenly no longer nervous. I started to smile. Uh, I was able to answer the question, and uh, we were uh, we had actually a really good conversation until it was over. And I felt really good. And after that, they had me back to interview a bunch of times, uh, probably a dozen times, you know, over the next few years. Uh, so that was a really fun experience that started out extremely nerve-wracking. Uh, but uh, it's just one of the many stories that I want to tell you about. And it also gives you an idea of, of uh, how dangerous COVID is, because I was sitting a foot and a half away. Obviously, this was, you know, back in 2008, there, there was no COVID. Uh, and, uh, you know, people do spit, you know, sitting close to each other. So make sure you wear a mask out there. Uh, but I've got a lot more cool stories to tell you about. And I can't wait to uh, bring them to you because I've already gone through a lot of the things that you are probably going to go through. And maybe some of that will be uh, being on the local news. You never know. So I'll be back with lots more stories.